Good morning. I want to show you something. Good morning, bulls. I think you know what it is. Brownie had her piglets last week, her first litter ever. I'm coming in to see her piglets. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Brownie had 12 piglets initially, which I think is a great first litter, but they were small, and three of them didn't make it past the first day. I lost the other two to I'm not sure what. Maybe she rolled on to them. Maybe they were just too weak, but seven healthy piglets a week old, and they're thriving. They've really gained quite a bit of weight since they were born. Red's piglets, on the other hand, they aren't shy at all. Yeah, you guys start eating me whenever I come in here. Oh, a little run, run, run. <laughs> Hi, Mom. These guys are ready to go outside. They are getting very big. So today's project is to get the fence and the pen ready to move them out. And this is where they're going to go. There haven't been pigs in here for two or three years. It is really overgrown. Buried under the grass, there's fence on two sides of this pen, but I gotta build a fence for the third and the fourth side here, and then we can move them in. The weed eater that I go around fences with, I have a different head on it than a string head. It's got these plastic inserts on it, and boy, they really chop away the thick stuff well. And it's hot today, so I'm gonna sweat. No big deal. Lost the blade, it broke. There's a little button in here you press and then you just slip the blade out like this. And I always carry some in my pocket here. You just put the new one in like that. There, good to go again. This is like a jungle in here. Wild leeks, no good. Burdocks, can't cut them. Uh, when I was in high school and college in the 80s, I worked for the City of Ithaca Department of Public Works Parks crew, and we went around and took care of all the lawns and the parks in the City of Ithaca, which has a lot of parks, and we'd also take care of roadsides and creek banks, and sometimes I would spend a week or more with one of those weed ears in my hand. They were bigger back then and heavier, and sometimes we put saw blades on them to cut down brush and things, so... Weed eating is something I've been doing for a long time. I don't enjoy it, but it gets the job done. Next job is to go through and pull up the fence wire where it's gotten buried under all this vegetation. Get it freed up so I can tighten it. I'm well, gonna have to fix that corner post leaning. That insulator needs to be replaced. Now I have to set new posts on two sides of the pen. So I had to tear the fence out to have our septic seals replaced last year. So I've got the posts here. They're just regular fence posts that I chop in half with a chop saw to make short pig pen posts. And I put these 12 feet apart, 12 of my feet. Well, I need a few more posts, so I'll cut them. That's all the posts. Now I go around and install the insulators, and they're about eight inches and 20 inches above the ground is where I run the wire. 
An electric fence is a psychological deterrent, not a physical barrier. So I want to get the wires at the height where the pig's rooting along and its nose touches the wire. And then it knows to stay away from the fence. They're pretty good about that. Put on the corner insulators, which I have some reused ones here. I strung out some of the wire that I had coiled up from when I took the fence down. I'm going to put some tensioners in here so I can keep the wires tight. And I don't keep a lot of tension on these wires, they don't need it. And then run the rest of the wire. I've got more salvaged fence wire. I'm doing this whole project using materials I've reused and salvaged from other places, which always feels good. Yeah, that always happens. Fasten the ends of these wires together with crimps. Fence all strung, we can tighten up the wires now. I've got a set of tensioners here and one on the other side and I walk around the fence to make sure everything's set right and then I'll tension up the other side. See this post here? This is a black locust post and this stood at the corner of the barnyard and we had a big bank barn right over here where the lawn is. This has been in the ground longer than I've been alive. I remember it from when I was a little kid and there's another one down there and there's more scattered around the farm. It's amazing how long these things last. I've always left it here as kind of a memory. Got the fence all tightened up. Now all we have to do is to hook it up to the main fence and to do that, we gotta unplug the fencer. See if I got enough wire here. I think I do. Oh yeah, I got enough. So we'll just bond it to the fence here, top wire and bottom wire, and then run that wire over to hook into the main fence over here. I'll have to get another piece of wire. So this jumper will bring the zap to the pig pen and I just hook it to both wires to make sure it's getting the maximum voltage through it. Plug the fencer back in. This time of year the fencer's always partially grounded out. There's just so much growth along the fence lines, but it's still got good zap. We'll check the voltage on it with my cheapo voltage tester. Three thousand volts. Not great, but it'll be good enough. Now I need to go and find my plywood pieces. Not sure where I left them. Take the loader up to the upper barn and get the plywood. I know it's up there. There it is, right over there. If I remember right, I need four pieces. This is the pig's hut. It's built out of three trees at the corners and then a post in one corner. I'm gonna put some hay in here before I put the boards on. There. Is it a cob job? Yep. Will it work? Yep. Good enough for me. <laughs> There's feed tray. I went to the store yesterday and I was literally in there for five minutes and when I came out there was a cop writing a ticket for parking in a handicapped spot. So I went up to the cop and I said, geez, can't you give a guy a break? And he didn't even look at me. He just kept writing his ticket. So I called him a pencil neck cop. He looked up and he glared at me and he finished that first ticket, stuck it under the windshield wiper and he started writing a second ticket for having bald tires. So I said to him, does your psychiatrist make you lay face down on the couch when you go to see him because you're so ugly? 
he finished that second ticket and then he started writing a third while well, this went on. I kept insulting him and he kept writing tickets till there were at least five stuck under the windshield wiper, at which point I gave up. I didn't care. My car was parked around the corner. Well, it's time to load up the piglets, but first we got to take mom out of the pen so she doesn't freak out too badly. Actually, I don't think she'll freak out much at all. Usually they're relieved when their piglets go. They're big. All right, Red. Are you ready to be free of these little monsters? I think you might be. There's hornets someplace. Must be a nest over there. Come on, Mom. Come on, let's go. They're right up here. Mom's just taking a quiet pee. Nothing to see here. When I opened that gate and she was slamming against it, it vibrated the barn and the hornets up there got very mad and stung me and stung Hillary. Oh well. Okay, here we go. Gotcha. She's not too upset, is she? She says, I finally get a good night's sleep tonight. Sorry about that. all the piglets so we'll let mom back in. He did some rooting in here. There you go. Come back. Yep. Well that's another good litter for Red. She had 11 piglets, 11 survived through and once they survived this long we're in pretty good shape. So she's a good sow. Give him some water. They won't come drink till after we're gone. <laughs> when we put pigs out on pasture, we put these boards up. Oh, I freaked them out. Because it gets them to figure out that this is their home and it calms them down. We leave these boards up for a couple days and then I'll take them down and instead of letting them out of the dog crate and have them 
two go right through the fence, which we've had happen before. If this is their kind of home base, they'll gradually come out and then they'll discover the fence and they'll understand the limits of their pasture. So it works really well. We haven't had problems with pigs getting out. We had one bad experience, and I have a story about that in an older video about pigs we brought home and they went straight through the fence. But since then, we haven't had a problem by closing in the pen like this. This is pig paradise right here. I mean, by December, when they go to the booster, they'll have cleared all this out and rooted it all up. And in the hot weather, pigs love the shade, so they'll be tunneling underneath these tall plants and making paths and eating at the roots. And it's a great place to keep pigs. We always keep pigs in forested environments so they can get shade, um, make a wallow, and keep cool in the summer. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll be checking back in on the pigs, of course, and hopefully one of these days they'll be run, run, running when I let them out. I'll see you next time.